The information discussed on Pocket Money with Jeff Tarbell is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no responsibility is assumed for inaccuracies. No statement made on this broadcast should be construed as a specific recommendation of a particular investment product. Views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent those of CBS Radio. News only is directed. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. And prepare yourself for... Show me the money! Ladies and gentlemen... The radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Good morning. We are uh, back live and uh, not in the studio. We are on the road. We've got all kinds of things going on today. We are at the uh, Purple Place Restaurant, which is in El Dorado Hills. And, of course, they put us in by the bar, which is... Uh, 8, 8 a.m. at the bar. <laughs> John said they were already cha- changing the keg early this morning, so we're ready to go. We've got our uh, our Gary Narberis. Did I do that right? That's right. Uh, cl- close enough? Good enough, yeah. Good enough. Gary, Gary is our, was our Facebook co-host winner. So he came out today, and we've got uh, the Big Wake weekend and all kinds of things to do. So we'll get to all that, I think. Give give away some stuff, too. Lots going on. Chris, are you down there still? Yes, I Hello, am. Chris. Okay, Chris. So we, we, we're going to start every show the same way we normally do, which is not, not normally in the bar, but, but the same way. From the mine of Christopher Lodge, 30 seconds from the mine of Christopher Lodge. Chris, what's happening? Haven't seen you in a couple weeks. Yeah, I know. It's a little weird. But uh, uh, this... Uh this Wednesday is going to be the uh, vote. Hopefully, it's the final vote for the uh, Sacramento Kings saga. And everyone's kind of flipping out because Chris Hansen said that, oh, I'm going to up my bid another $75 million. But that's not really what this is all about. The NBA is going to be deciding if the Kings should leave or if they should stay. They've already kind of said the uh, that they should stay. So it doesn't matter how much money you put in. The Sacramento Kings are staying in Sacramento. And they're not going to give the team to Chris Hansen. He's already said he's going to move him up to Seattle. He's got a website, Sonics uh, Arena, so everyone knows what he wants to do. So it doesn't really matter if I, – I could only say maybe if he was offering a billion dollars for this franchise, maybe he would be able to buy it and move it up to uh, Seattle. But I think the uh, Kings are staying, and they're going to be here for a long time. All right, that's Chris, mine from Christopher Laud. I um – I wish I was the uh, seller of a king of a basketball team right now. Just, just boost it seventy five million just, here and there. Well, seventy five million amongst friends. I mean, a guy like Mike, seventy five million doesn't make mean much to me. A guy like me makes him two bucks an hour. Probably, probably you know, it adds up a little bit. Two fifty. Two fifty. Before we get going too far today, I do want to say a, a big thanks to Mike and the, the folks here at the Purple Place. Thank you so much for having us up. Hey, thanks for being out here. You guys are great. And um, Mike's been giving away some breakfasts and doing some things, so we really enjoy it. And normally, John and I are like, it would be in the parking lot. You know, during the race, or somewhere Stuffed out in the corner, somewhere somewhere out back in the blizzard. But so to come inside and uh, have a place to food and, and have a little breakfast is is great. So, how's business been? Actually, pretty good. We've uh, we're doing well. A little different times now with all the financial markets going crazy. People are a little skittish, but um, they're still coming out to eat. So we they, I, I still I still drink my ass off, and it doesn't matter really. <laughs> it's actually, the worst things get. I just I keep working my way to the top shelf up there. So yeah, so, you know that's a down economy. People drink more. Is so that, is that? It's, it's a dirty little secret. But, how long uh, have you, how long have you owned this place? Uh, 2006 November, oh. we took it over. So you had uh, and, and did you did you see a noticeable drop off, and and if so, about when? We well, we took it over in 06, and it was uh, it was pretty slow when we took it over. Okay. We took it over cold turkey on a Wednesday. Uh, local place kept all the staff on, started fixing it up day one. Was it purple when you bought it? It was purple for okay. a long time. Open since 1955. So if we were to change the color, I think we'd be get, run out of town. Get a beat down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so from then we built business all the way up. So we we you know knock on wood, yep. we we started pretty low and kept building. So yeah, awesome. I, I contend. I contend. Now I, I live over on the Roseville side, but. It doesn't matter where I go or when I go to eat. There's always a damn line. And, I, and I, I, my wife's always asking me, I thought you said the economy was bad. Everybody, it seems like everybody's always eating, out at restaurants. But uh, but you notice it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We, we noticed that um, 
families that are used to get a babysitter on a Saturday night come out and drink and we'll see them Sunday morning or instead coming out to dinner with the kids and then coming again with to dinner with the kids. That ruins a good buzz, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not they're not spending the big bucks where they don't need to, but they're yeah. still spending the money. They're just being a little more careful where they put it. Yeah, and, you, and you've got such a, a unique location here that it's you know kind of in between, and there's not much around you, I guess. Or maybe I'm not yeah. I'm not scoping out your. Uh, I guess if you go to the to the new Folsom side, there is, but you kind of got a little niche here. I think it's kind of nice. Yeah, we're, we're the anti-chain. You know, you see a lot more in Folsom where you you get a lot of the national chain. Yeah. And in a purple building, you kind of have to embrace being the unchained. You don't see a lot of purple places around. No, that's for sure. So you can find uh, you can follow Mike and his group on uh, Facebook as well, the Purple Place, and you can come down here. What is he at? We're on um, Green we're, Valley. Yeah, Green Valley Road, right at the edge of Folsom, right right next to the lake. So we're in between Browns Ravine. Um, and uh, the Folsom side. Yeah, so. this is you're climbing up the hill there yeah. a little bit. And we also have the new new Folsom Bridge, which makes my life a lot easier. Oh yeah, absolutely. Going back and forth. I was here like in five minutes. I mean, this is this is too easy to get across. I remember <laughs> driving across the old dam. And yeah. That, you know, and then when they took that away, oh. Yeah, that was that would so, not have helped. Yeah, so life's better. Well, Mike, I really yeah. appreciate it very much. Uh, I'll let you get back to work, yep. and uh, ha- thanks for having us yeah, in. Yeah, thanks and for being in. Breakfast, everything else too. So we'll. Uh, Keep moving on. Thank you so much. Yep. Have fun. That's uh, the owner, Mike, at uh, the Purple Place up here in El Dorado Hills. So uh, nice enough to have us in for uh, what we're calling our Big Wake Weekend. Big Wake Weekend, that's right. And um, we thought we might. They might have yanked out one of the big, the big hydroplane boats here, but um, it was just too many things going on and too close to the uh, to that. So if you're, Actually, event, exactly. If you're tuned in for that uh, in the second hour at 10 o'clock, uh, Bob Richardson is going to join us, and he is a promoter of the Big Wake Weekend. And I have some... The guy's got to be, if I if I understand correctly, he actually was able to get Folsom Lake shut down for a weekend to only their event. And I don't know how you do that. I mean, honestly, God, I don't know how you Amazing. do that. Amazing. It's going to be cool, though. It's going to be oh, it's extremely cool. Now, I think they did it on the river a few years ago, um, and I mean, like, quite a few years ago, down there in front of uh, in front of your, your building there, Gary, in, in, in West Sac. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you convinced the state of California to close down a one of the, the most popular um, recreation, areas. recreation areas in the state on a hot weekend. On a, on a hot weekend, there's gonna be. I think you talk about hot. It's gonna be a hot mess when people are showing up with their boats, and you cannot get <laughs> you in. You can't get on the lake. Yeah, so I don't know. I, that was, we'll have to talk to Bob about that. He's got to be. Um, he's got more social, uh, more social skills than I do in getting that pulled off. So, um, but if you want to go check it out, we're gonna be giving away some Friday uh, passes to that race uh, during, during the second hour. We'll be giving away some T-shirts to some people here too. So. A lot of things to cover. Hangtown is coming up next weekend. We will be out there again. And that big wake weekend is the hydroplane racing. So we're going to have a little bit of uh, little wakeboarding, little hydro boats. I saw uh, that. It's going to be amazing. So that you can you can buy. So you, you need to go to their. Well, and we'll talk about it more. You need to go to their website because you you cannot show up and buy a ticket, which is unusual. But I don't want to. I don't want to get. We don't. Wanna, we don't know any of the answers of what we're doing. So we'll do that in the ten o'clock. I promise. But we'll. Uh, <laughs> Nothing out of the ordinary. No. No. We'll, just, we'll keep jumping around here. It is Mother's Day weekend, and for all you mothers and mothers, uh, happy Mother's Day weekend to you, and I uh, hope you have a, a good weekend. we got a lot of things to cover. Where have you been, by the way? I haven't seen you like in a, like two weeks. I know. I feel like I've been gone for a month. I was down in Yosemite for a week. What are you doing down there? Just riding motorcycles. <laughs> you were. <laughs> with, uh, with a bunch of 10-year-old bunch of, uh, bunch t- of ten year old fourth graders. Nice. nice. <laughs> how old, how, how, by Monday night, were you already tired of that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was for the kids. That's all we kept saying. It's for the kids. doing it for the kids. Uh, it's, fun. it's fun. I, I um, we took last. It's, it's weird to have a weekend off and not be gone. So we took last last weekend off, and I invited my brother-in-law over with some of his toys. And of course, some of his toys are a, are a D6 cat. I saw that. And we tore the living hell out of my backyard. Nothing which, like landscaping with a uh, with a cat. It's like it's like uh, trying to kill mosquitoes with a nuclear bomb. And so I'm not sure that it looks any better now. That it, actually, it doesn't look any better now than it did before because you cannot. There's no sculpting with a with a with a dozer. You're you just know, moving. You're just stuff. you're moving stuff from point A to point B, and then you get done and you're like, oh God, what did I do? You know, now you got to really clean it up. And the problem we had, if in the past, I don't know if you followed during the winter, we had you know almost had a house that we just remodeled almost flooded out because you know all the water from our neighbors ends up on our porch basically. So we tried to fix that problem, and now. And this is the problem with whipping out a dozer, is that you're not done yet. So now you look around and you say, okay, well, I can't live with that. I either got to, uh, you know, and of course my daughter's like, we've got to put a pool in. I, we, we don't even have the house finished yet. We've got to put a pool in. And that's a whole other story I have to get to in a little bit, too. There, there's, 
I don't know where the slow economy is, but it isn't in the contracting business because everybody from a person, can you come out and put in like a, you know, eight foot section of tile on a barbecue to could you tear the house down and rebuild it to a pool to whatever you wanted to do? Everybody is busy, you know, who's, who's doing that. Um, now, we're getting, now we're picking up our cells there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're picking up our picking up the, playing ourselves there a little bit too. So we'll be, we'll be confusing the heck out of ourselves. We keep doing that. Focus, <laughs> focus. Yeah, as long as the microphones don't pick it up. We. Uh, so you didn't get the dozer stuck this time though. Right? I, did not, I did not get it stuck. That's good. I um, it was it was fortunately dry enough you could keep you could keep tearing things apart and, and moving the dirt around. Yeah, he's gonna have to. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and kill that. Because it, it, we keep we keep hearing ourselves and you hear yourselves. And two, two minutes later, I don't want to hear myself the first time, let alone the second time. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, we almost have to be in a, almost have to be in a separate room to do that. So there's people that are here in the in the purple place that are wondering what what are these guys talking about, and and why are they in the corner of them by themselves again? So they were going to try to put the radio on. But that's it, what we're used to. It just won't work. So that's too bad. We can have to li- listen on their uh, on their iPods if they will. But anyway, I was um, now I've got this gigantic mess, and you got to figure out you know what do you. I moved uh, four tons of dirt to the left here, and now I'm trying to figure out. Okay, now, and I guess it's a way if you want to stimulate yourself to keep going forward the project, you just create a giant mess, and you got to come back and figure out how to fix it, <laughs> fix it all up. So anyway, have you got any ideas on how to sculpt some land? Uh, with, come on out, and I got a project for you to do. I'm staying away. We'll get to that. <laughs> bring, bring your own shovel and your rake if you would, and we'll uh, we'll do a little bit of work there. So I, I do have to officially announce this is this is my last day of being fat again. <laughs> Oh, I gotta hear this one. This is day one. <laughs> this is news. This is day one. I I, um, I I tried the. Actually, I didn't try. I did, I did fairly well with the with the Weight Watchers thing before, and then this is the problem: is I have no self control. So you stop doing the Weight Watchers, and I got down to like two oh eight, two oh nine, which was was pretty good from two thirty. I thought, well, hell, I don't need to follow the program anymore. I know what it takes now to do that, and and now I, I measured. Weighed myself again this morning. Back up to 224. So I'm going back on a different program now, the one that Sarducci's using, and everybody else is. You know, you eat every two and a half hours, some you know nutrition bar, and and so I'm, my goal is 200. So I'm back on it again. So I apologize. 200. 200. What are you trying to wear a speedo to big no, had, weekend? I had to put on my fat pants today. I just to get in here. Right? <laughs> I, I I I just I'm going to shoot for some 200 because if you look at the table, this is the problem. You go to the doctor's office, you look at the little chart they have on the wall. Exactly. I am, I am clinically obese. Oh, everybody is. Mm-hmm. I know, but I, you got I, I got to be you know I think I got to be 180 to not be obese. Well, I'm not going to make 180. <laughs> I haven't made 180 since like 11th grade. But anyway, I'm, I'm back on it. Back right. on, I'm going to do it today. Starting today, after well, the ba- af- after the bacon and eggs you just ate. <laughs> exactly. That's why. That's why I didn't say that before I ate. I said oh, that after I ate. I'm going to start tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I'm starting gonna, now. <laughs> going to start tomorrow. So, um, so see, Gary's breakfast just showed up. So chef's gonna, mess. The chef's mess. That looks actually looks yeah. pretty good. That looks great. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, let's throw out a quiz question, John, and um, take our first break here a little bit this morning, and we'll let Gary have a little breakfast, and we'll get ourselves organized now that we're back on track here. All right, so are you that are awake and ready to go here? We have some artesian pizzas, we have some river cats, and... and we give out a Hangtown Pass you want, too. Hangtown, okay. coming up next weekend. Yep. We're going to be out there live, so for you motocross racers. The question of the day is, who is the leading fruit juice seller in the world? Which company? Which company? And I did not know this. It is. And it's it, a, yeah, so don't give us the brand name of your favorite juice. Give us right. the parent company that owns them all. That's right. 339-1140. Three, three, I'll give you a hint. They buy one of every six oranges grown in the world. Is that right? That's, that's amazing. One it, of every six it, it, oranges well, grown in the world. I think the article was talking about they're going to try to get, uh, they committed to the state of Florida to, try to do some more. Because I think a lot of oranges. Florida were not, and Brazil. Were not, oh, as I say, weren't coming out of, or, uh, right. out of Florida. They're coming out of Brazil. So 339-1140. Three, three, one 800 You can text us if you'd like at 44-1140. Our text machine appears to be working. Uh, again, g- give us a quiz question one more time, Johnny. So the question is, who, which company is the leading fruit juice seller in the world? So don't give us the brand. We're looking for the parent company. And uh, just uh, they actually buy one of every six oranges in the entire world. Wow. It's amazing. Okay, and your choice. You want some Hangtown tickets or some River Cavs tickets or artesian pizzas. Round table artisan pizza. Up to you. Chris, we'll go ahead and take us to a quick break. 339-1140 if you want to jump in. 1-800-920-1140. You can text me at 441140. My name is Jeff Tarbell. That's Gary. That's John. This is Purple Place. 
We're going to be your right, Jack back. That's right. Talking money. And we're back to talking money. And here's Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Hanging out in the bar at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, well. Listening to a little disco. The good news is you didn't wake up here. <laughs> that is that is true. <laughs> now, Gary, I'm not sure about. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than this. That's right. Our uh, our Facebook winner and uh, co-host for the day, Gary. Gary, tell where, where you work. Give us a little background on you, where you work, what you've been doing. And... So uh, I work at Rayleigh's. Uh, <clears throat> been there for 28 years and uh, started from the bottom, courtesy clerk, worked my way up into a management position and out to corporate. And right now we're doing... Uh, Roll out of our time clock program to our distribution center out in Natoma. So, always busy. Very good, very good. Rayleigh's the uh, not the biggest employer in the area, but they're they might be number two. There. They're getting they're yeah. getting up there. So, uh, you're, so you're out there you're out there in West Sac. There. Yes, indeed. Yeah, nice. Appreciate you listening. And appreciate you coming down today. It's jump, a pleasure. Jump in where you feel you want to. Sure. There's no uh, no rules here. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> I see John just. Sat down one day and started talking, and I don't even know who the guy is. He just he shows up every Saturday, so he just keeps showing up. Just, hey, isn't that one of the golden rules? You just got to show up. You know what? Being being on time and being in attendance is half the battle. That's right, half the battle. Now, do you get the paycheck? That's the question. Oh, oh yeah, all, all the good. time. The, yeah. the pay is enormous. It's enormous. Awesome. Here. Yes. He gets to bring the gear out. Well, he get, well, this is he got breakfast this morning, which is like a. That'll cover you for another oh, month. Yeah, I, I step up from donuts. I got bacon and eggs today. <laughs> That's right. A little less sugar, so we'll be, we won't be quite wound up so tight uh, this afternoon. I noticed there's a few people having uh, some tomato juice this morning. Yeah, some vegetarians in the group. The vegetarians yeah. in the group, exactly. Okay, I um I got a, I got an interesting. Uh, so it it's funny because some people listen to my radio commercials better than I do, apparently. So I got a, I got a very nice, very polite email last night saying basically I. I interpreted, "Hey, dumbass, listen to your own ad." Um, you're, one of the one of the ads I, that I started at the end of last year said, "You know, hey, the stock market basically stinks, but rates are good." Well, I haven't. That one's been in rotation or got back in rotation, and I'm looking around, going, "The guy in the email said, are you sure you want to say the stock market's not doing so great when it's uh, at 15,000 and all time and, high?" Yeah, and maybe you could just say rates are great only. So I, I appreciate the fact that people, someone actually listened to the text and. And corrected me, so I, I sent a thing to the radio station saying, we might want to take that one off. But, the, you know, about a half an hour later, I got to thinking, and I said, you know what? The Dow was at 15,000, but the Dow is only 30 stocks. And most of those are your are your blue chip or your bigger companies, and some of them would consider them a defensive stock. Um, so I started looking around, you know, is everybody really... Is everybody doing well who's in the stock market? Because if you look, if you look at the Nasdaq or the S and P, there's 500 stocks in there. And I, and I was thinking about this one because and what is what was the gist of that? Because it was, it's just saying that uh, almost 90 percent of the earnings growth uh, of the Standard and Poor's 500 was driven by 10 companies. Yeah. So, <laughs> so 10 companies and are could, driving 90 percent of the earnings growth of the growth. Yeah. So I, could, I couldn't go through the where I was and on my on my iPad I couldn't. I couldn't scroll down through the list of all the all 500 S&P stocks, but it would it would snapshot different groups, you know, by um, in alphabetical order. And there were a lot of reds, and the reds were were a loss for the year. So I thought, okay, so it's another one of those things. If you just listen to the news and say, oh, you know, well, okay, the stock market's you know kicking kicking butt and everybody's doing great. Well, those 30 stocks were, and you could see a snapshot of the Dow 30, and all 30 of them were, you know, I think the average for the group was up 18 percent. So those 30 were were good, but. Look at let's look at 500. Let's look at a thousand stocks. Are all thousand up? Well, if 90 percent of the gain or the earnings in the S&P 500 is from these 10, that means there are 490 of them somewhere else aren't doing as well. That's right. So, I think that you have to be careful. Well, a, I appreciate the person telling me that maybe your ad isn't is it right on target, and he's right. But B, you got to be very careful about. Uh, this is why I wouldn't want to be a, a stock financial planner because if, right now, if I, if I was a financial advisor, my client looked in their statement and says. Man, I only made like six percent this year, dude. Well, six percent on what? Are you all in bonds? You know, you got all your. You, um, I still have like money that just sits in cash. I, I, I still am not convinced that this. Not going to plummet. That, well, I don't know that plummet's the right word, but word. But I'm trying to figure out correction. Why? Why is it so good if everybody says it's so bad? Exactly. Uh, so I'm. You know, what is it that's so good about it? Um, are people just sick and tired of being sick and tired? I mean, there, you do come up on a point, a point where you say, you know what, I've, I've had it. I'm sick and tired of 
being down. I'm sick and tired of seeing how things stink. I'm just gonna I'm gonna change my own mentality, and and that there is some truth to that. And I was I was mentioning um, somebody. I, I I've probably been in about eight eight or nine states, maybe about eight states, or I can I call Southern California another state because it's so different than us. In, in, in the first 90 days of this month, and a lot of it's been on business, some some personal, but a lot of business, just in a lot of traveling. And I have yet to come into a state, and that's as far as Florida to Texas to all the West Coast to Colorado to Utah. And I have yet to come into any of these states and have have anybody look at me and go, "Oh, dude, it just sucks here." Or, you know, we're getting our butt kicked, and there's no business. I'm look. I mean, no matter where you go, and maybe it's just the people that I'm happen to be talking to, but. I don't. I, I don't see a, a downturn. I mean, I, I mean, I, everybody you t- I talk to in, in all fields across the board are doing very well, and maybe that's real. Maybe that's just relative to the point that I was doing so so badly before, so poorly, that now anything is considered really well. And, and maybe there's some truth to that. But yeah, I mean, a lot. And this week has shown a lot of things in the stock market and the bond. So many different things coming out. Housing, employment. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good news. Good news. Good news. Just backed up on each other. So. I think a lot of it's just, you know, we're so tired of being down, and there's so many little good things going on that, you know, it just lifts everybody's spirit, and they're just having at it. Well, I did I did pick up one article that I, th- that I thought was um, interesting. It's right here on the top. When you talk about when you talk about unemployment or what they talk about is the, the rate, the number of people that are actually looking for employment, and one thing that might be a side benefit, which is will be kind of weird, is that, Companies have learned to do with less, so tech, technology. I mean, you're, I'm sure Rayleigh's is, exactly. doesn't have as many employees as they do, as they did before. So you learn to do, you learn to do with less. They're making more profits with less. And the other thing that we're, we're seeing here is this article right here. People start retiring, and they don't look for work anymore. So you don't have as many people out, out of work, and so maybe. It's easier to say things are doing better because there's not many people who are, are not getting jobs. They're not looking for jobs, and it's it's just kind of a weird. I, I don't, I'm not sure I get it all yet. Uh, I know I know why companies are making greater profits because if you're not paying as many employees, you're not doing as much there. You're you're, you're saving more money, but. Yeah, I think it's kind of like, you know, in the housing market, we always say, you know, where's the bottom? Well, we figured out where the bottom is about a month or two later. So I think we're going to figure out this whole thing as things keep continue to progress. Okay, so here's my question for you two, because I'm, I'm constantly accused of being anti-Obama. <coughs> no. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm not anti-Obama. I'm anti some of his policies. Yes. Right. Uh, I, I'm sure the guy would be a fun guy to hang out with and, and probably very intelli- is a very intelligent guy. But some of the policies I don't necessarily agree with. But now, if this turns around and we're at the start of his, we're the start of his second term, does he get credit for making the turn i'm gonna have to say yes absolutely because okay. you know what are people going to remember they're going to remember where you went out and not where you went exactly. in typically mm-hmm. okay so does it doesn't seem like he got any any blame for anything in the last three or four years and we could we could say that it, the previous was so bad you know that that he just was inherited a, a sinking ship and it just kept sinking yeah and there's probably some truth to that and, and there's probably some fallacy to that but I, I, I'm with you guys. I think if you're if you're standing on the deck, or you're the coach of the team when it wins the Super Bowl, regardless whether you threw a pass or you didn't throw a pass, um, you get that credit, mm-hmm. yeah. right or wrong. Yeah. Now the question that I have, in a, that I've been throwing out to some of the financial advisors, is okay, what has the one bomb that hasn't hit yet is 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 healthcare. What we what we've got what we've got so far is some of the quote unquote good stuff that was coming from, but the tab hasn't been laid on our foot yet. That's 2014. So my concern is that companies like a, a Rayleigh size, companies like ours, looking around, maybe those companies that are at like 75 to 100 employees, start saying, you know, we're not going to hire anybody more because I think over 55 is kind of that cut over 55 employees is a cut off for having to really get a lot of healthcare things going. Mm-hmm. So are we going to see a little bit of a regression from companies saying, you know what, we're going to do with less again, or or what's going to, probably going to happen is they're going to take the bill and they're going to go, here, John, here, Gary, I'm not. it's cheaper for me as your company to pay the fine for not covering you. You're on your own. And then now, if you, the two of you have to pick up your own health care, I don't care how old you are or how many kids you have, if you're not picking it up now and you've got to pick up a tab between 300 to to 1000 bucks a month, 
Okay, Gary ain't buying a Porsche, and he might not even be buying Rayleigh's groceries <laughs> on the same pay if he's paying a thousand bucks a month. Oh, exactly. And you know, so this going to have it's going to have an effect that I don't know that we, that we have pr- predicted in yet. Yeah, I mean, I guess personally, I look at you know the bailout of the car industry. That's starting to turn. They're getting paid back. We're starting to see Fannie and Freddie paying big billions of dollars back. Uh, I think healthcare is going to hit. I think it's going to be ugly. And then I think there's going to be some turnaround from it because if the companies continue to stockpile their cash reserves and the economy is, and I say that in quotes, you know, moving forward and growing, I think it's going to have to take effect and there's going to be a little backlash from it. But uh, Yeah, but if you, if, you, if you are a stockholder in, in Apple or any of the companies that are holding billions of dollars, um, well, you can see Apple now is bleeding off some of that cash back to their back to their shareholders. Do you want your company to spend all your cash on on employee health care, or do you? I mean, if you're a stockholder, your biggest concern is is profitability of the business, um, not necessarily health care benefits for the employees. So I, I think it's an interesting. Oh, it's going to take a hit. There's discuss- no doubt. There's going to be a lot yeah, of discussion sure. about it. A lot of upset. Uh, but how's it going to work out is, is, the, is the big question for sure. So let, let me ask this because we're going to take another break and take another quiz question here. If you are an employer, and I don't care whether you employ uh, two people or 2,000, if you're an employer, I'd like to hear from you today. Have you, I know you have, have you investigated what this means for you? Have you made some business plans already that says, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to just haul ass until 2014. I mean, we're going to do everything we can, and then we're going to cut the strings to something and, and when that hits. I mean, what, what are your plans? What are you going to do? Because, uh, and have you told your employees what your plans are? I think we may come to see the end of the full-time worker with this health care issue. Yeah, you, you know, since they've put, you know, employees have to work, you know, greater than 30 hours to be uh, eligible for right. it or qualify for it, I think you're going to see the businesses look at a way that they can turn that around and reduce their full-time workforce, get everybody under 30 hours, and again, like to your point, it's on you. So maybe maybe this article is, is really the key here. Maybe as the workforce gets older, so you take someone who says, okay, I'm not ready to retire, but I'm willing to semi-retire, so I'll take 25 to 30 hours a week at something. Yeah. And then the, the employer says, okay, well, rather than hire John, I'm going to hire John's dad. Because John's dad will come over here, you know, and I'll pay him $25 an hour with no benefits, and I'll keep him on, and John's you know, out on the street. So may- maybe it's the younger worker looking for that full-time employment that, that may be, you know, on, on the string there. And that, that could be dangerous, particularly with all the, you know, exactly. a, I'll show you I'll show you an article here that talks about student loans, which is <laughs> the next bailout that they're proposing, yeah. and, and that's going to be another discussion as well. So. A lot of things to cover, but if you are, uh, so we'll throw out a little text question there at uh, 441140. If you're an employer or if your employer has notified you that there are some changes coming uh, that are not to your benefit, uh, you know, let me know because I, I'd be interested to see, you know, what, what's going on outside of our own company. I mean, we're, we're, we're struggling with okay, what do you do, you know, and how do you do it and how do you handle it because we're in a very cyclical business. You, when you commit to do X, you know, rates go up one point. Our volume goes off by, you know, 40%. We're in trouble. So you have to maintain some flexibility there as well. So we did get our. Did we get out the winner to our last? We quiz did. Well, uh, so our last quiz question was about orange juice. Speaking of uh, breakfast. Yeah, it was ac- about orange juice. It's actually about um, the fruit juice, leading fruit juice seller in the world with uh, billion-dollar brands such as Minute Maid, Simply, and Del Val. Uh, the actually, the answer is Coke. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Wow. Yeah, they buy one of every six oranges grown in the world. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that is that is amazing. And <laughs> they're I, actually they're they're planting. There's about 25,000 acres of new uh, orange trees being uh, planted in Florida and Brazil, and Coke is buying all of them. Wow. Every single bit of 25,000 new acres, plus what they're already buying. So I don't we know. Did I, have a winner, and I believe it was Brian. Brian. I think Brian? Yeah, Brian. Okay, we Brian. have his information. Yep, so let's go out, throw out another quiz question on the air here. You can text us if you want, 441140. You can give us a call, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. And uh, your choice, uh, some Hangtown or some River Cats or some flatbread uh, artisan pizza from Round Table. Your choice. We're going to do the boat passes probably here because we have to get those out today. So right. go right ahead. So uh, with oranges comes bees, right? Yeah. And I might have just blown this, but here's the question. 
What is the biggest, most buzzed about anti-aging ingredient right now? What is it? So like for like makeup and stuff, or yes, makeup, uh, serums, uh, <laughs> anti-aging cream, anti-aging creams. Apparently, you or I have not been using any of this. No, <laughs> it is a it's something that goes that in is there. In there, orange and juice. it is hot. It is the hottest, most buzzed about anti-aging ingredient in these items now. What is that item? Three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. It's Mother's Day weekend. So listen to the answer. All right? Maybe you want to get now, some if, of this. If you buy some for your mother, does, does she take that as a compliment, or does she go, "Am I getting old?" That is a good it's question. Like if you gave her a Weight Watchers plan, is she? Am I getting fat? Based on the prices of some of this stuff, it, it, it is a very nice gift. Oh, it's a nice gift. It's huh? a nice gift. Yes. Okay. I had one of those right on my lip one time, but that was from. So, what is the most buzzed about <laughs> anti-aging ingredient out there right now? Three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. You can text us at forty four eleven forty. This is talking money. We're going to be right back, Jack. Talking money. The action continues now with talking money and Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Doing are you good? How's we, everybody out there? We are uh, live, as you can probably tell from the background noise there. Actually, we just kind of pump this in like they do those sitcoms where they put, they pipe in put fake a bunch la- of music in the back, <laughs> fake laughter and fake entertainment. We are at the uh, Purple Place, which is uh, up on Green Valley Road, just uh, up in El Dorado Hills. Yeah, before if you're coming up from from Folsom before you get to Browns Valley, right? Browns Valley is the next one up. So uh, right there on the on, on the main ro- on the main drag. And the place is full. Yeah, the place is, is uh, packing up here pretty good. So I don't. Again, I say, what recession? What recession? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, for me, like a good breakfast is like a half a donut. Or now it's gonna be one of these one of these these little uh, fat bars that I have to eat because I like drop some weight back down. That's oh, ridiculous. Oh, you missed you missed that, Mark. I, I said I'm I'm back on my diet thing again. I, was, I ballooned back up to 224. I'm I got to get back to 200. So anyway, Mark Koppel's joined us. We'll talk to Mark in just a second. So we did have a quiz question, though. A good Mother's Day gift. Yeah, the quiz question was what has become the most buzzed about anti-aging ingredient out there? And uh, apparently there's different serums and potions and lotions. And it all has, we have a winner from a text line, it yep. all consists of bee venom. Bee venom? Bee venom. Buzz bee. Bee venom. Well, it's it's easy, out there. It's easier than getting stung individually. That's right. It quick, quickens the pace. But you said the stuff's not cheap, huh? It's not. I mean, how do you get bee venom? How do you milk a bee? We have some Bee Enigma Anti Wrinkle Cream at 123 bucks. Oh. We have the I can't even pronounce it Royal Youth Serum at Nordstrom for 142. Yeah. So you can get the La Creme Bee Venom Mask for 185. You, you try milking a bee. It, it takes a while. That's why it's expensive. That's right. <laughs> just, there's a lot. There's not not much venom in the in the bees there. So I, I wanted to get into a couple of things because the second hour we're going to do a little little bit of the uh, Big Wake Weekend and uh, Bob Richardson has shown up and we're going to give away some stuff here and uh, and on the radio and we'll talk about a little bit a little bit of boat racing and some of his marketing. But um, this came up, I want to say, two to three times this week, ten times a month. That's just for me. I'm sure for John as well. And, and, and the question, the most common question I get either emailed to me or called to me is, is one of two things. Um, I've been contacted by, an, by a company that does loan modifications. Not the lender, but an outside company that does loan modifications. Or my bank has contacted me about a loan mod. Or I've been in a loan mod and I don't know what to do now. Or my bank screwed me in my loan mod and now I, lost, I just lost my house to foreclosure. And none of the above has ever been a positive story um, that, I, that I've heard. But generally, I only hear from the people who are now panicked and they don't know, you know, they don't know what to do. So I was going to come on here today and say, don't do a loan mod. I'm not sure they're successful. And yet my buddy shows up, Mark, who's here. And uh, Mark, that's all he did for many a year for one of the, we'll say one of the, the big box ones, one of the big ones, the ones who should be doing it. So I asked Mark to finish up his breakfast, shut up and sit down, and let me ask you some questions. So thanks, bro. How are you? Absolutely great. How are you? Good. Awesome. You, you did this. Remember, we did this at RPM that one time. Remember, you were on. You, we did. Yeah, we talked mortgage stuff. Uh, a few, uh, man, four or five years yeah, ago. Quite yeah, quite a few years ago. Yeah. In fact, right. That was kind of when you. I think you were. I'm trying to remember what you, who you were working for then. But we we switched over right before you started up with with the bank. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was kind of when the uh, mortgage world was starting to turn upside down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's been it's been righted probably, and um, <laughs> to some degree, yeah. Absolutely. And so you were doing what? 
in the, at the bank? Well, uh, the last uh, two and a half years or so at, again, one of the giant lenders that uh, you mentioned, um, we became a mod center to okay. where instead of originating mods, this place had so many yeah. uh, you know, loans with problems that we started doing modifications. Okay. So did did you reach out to a borrower or did the borrower have to reach to you? Um, all of the above, but generally it was because they reached out to the bank um, inquiring or had a problem or, you know, were late or whatever the issue was. Okay. All of the above. So, so what I'm trying to figure out is... Um, what what is the what is the right process? I mean, what should somebody expect? Because you hear a lot about this. Well, we'll throw you into a trial, and then they they throw you out of the trial. It didn't work. Well, first off, they have to qualify for the trial, and the only way that you can qualify for that is by again turning over all of your financial documents and your income um, and, and all of that. You have to basically go through an underwriting process. It's it's, it's almost not, like it's almost like trying to unqualify for a home loan. So you're, so you're right. You're, you're saying, so you, so what is a what does a qualified candidate look like? Do they do they have to have lost their job? They don't have any money in the bank? Or Great question. Uh, first of all, there has to be a hardship. Number one, has to be a hardship. And it can be any of the big things that happen in life. Um, so something that caused your financial situation. So but, but a, hardship, a hardship doesn't mean I'm $200,000 upside down and I can still afford to make my payments. That's not a hardship? That's correct. It has to be lost my job, I, you know, making less money, uh, you know, we used to be a two-income family. My wife got sick. Or got whatever, pregnant. Or whatever, yeah. whatever the issue is, okay. it's, it's a hardship that has changed your financial situation to where you're not able to afford your mortgage. Okay. And how, how long should it take a bank to determine whether I, I qualify or not? It usually is up to the customer. Uh, you know, it's, it's not unlike, again, getting a loan. I need all of your information, your taxes, and so on and so forth. That's kind of what gets you there in the first place. They're going to ask you for all of your information. They're gonna, it's a, there's a five-page application that gets uh, put together, and that, all that has to be answered you know, correctly and completely. Completely okay. is the main thing. If there was anything blank, that would usually let the uh, mortgage company kind of just sit on your, on your, 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 your file. Okay. So, so I got all my stuff into you now. Do I only deal with you the whole way through? I mean, in the you know, it's different. Even in the, in the, if you're doing a a more a forward mortgage, you're doing a real loan. Mm -hmm. You know, you I may do part of it. My processor may do part, and then we'll fund it. But I think one of the biggest complaints that, and I think one of the re things they were trying to change was, okay, I started with Mark, and then Mark took my information, and then he said he passed it off to Gary, and Gary didn't call me back because John, mm -hmm. his boss, is on vacation. You know, it just kind of get routed around. So nobody ever, nobody, ever, the buck never stopped with anybody. Right. Well, and that's exactly what one of the big problems was because this was it has been such a big problem that back in 2011, um, Uncle Sam basically said that you had to have one point of contact. Okay. So, so that that did help a lot because it made Mark or whoever the person to, that 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 customer would then deal with going forward. Now, Mark doesn't make all the decisions. Right. He would get your information. Um, and then it goes through an underwriting process similar to the way it does when you originate a loan. Right. Okay. So, so you, you, your underwriter accepts my package. I, I had a legitimate uh, issue, so I qualify for a. So I'm only getting, I'm only getting a trial. Right. So as long, as long as everything uh, was was there, you had your um, your hardship. We verified that. We uh, got all of your financial information, and basically, then you are approved for what we what a trial. The government says you can't change or modify a loan until you can test that that person can, you know, uh, afford that. So, right. So there's a trial before it actually gets modified. And generally, if, as long as you get the trial and as long as you make your three payments um, of your trial, generally you'll be then. Uh, per permanently modified after that. Okay, so what are wh and what are we modifying? Are we modifying my balance? Are we modifying my payment? But I'm going to owe you a crap load later. All of the above. Um, you know, it, it depends on the mod. Um, some, you know, the, the first mod that generally people are reviewed for is HAMP, which is people refer to that as the government or the Obama plan or right. whatever it is. Um, that one, uh, usually there isn't any um, principal forgiveness. It's generally just um, uh, modifying the payment down to a pro somewhere in the 31 to 35 percent of their income, you know, to to qualify. Okay, so you took my three thousand dollar payment, you made it two. Okay, I can afford to make the payment. What happens to the other thousand bucks? It's just getting tagged on the back, and so I I just it just keeps going up and up. Yes, in, in some well, in some cases it, it it basically gets tagged onto the end of the year line, so that there is a a prince a, a big balloon payment at the end. Okay. But then in some cases those are being forgiven. So there's all kinds of of things that are happening. Okay, so 
this is this is my the challenge is that you, you hear from or I hear from so many people that went through the 90 days or they, they did everything they said they were going to do. Some of them said they were as long as six months, and then and then they get a letter from the bank saying, okay, your modification period's over and you're not you're not approved to go any further. So it's like, why the hell put me in the program for three to six months only to tell me that uh, either I don't qualify and now you're going to foreclose on me or I don't qualify and all the interest I didn't pay for the last six months has just been added to my balance and now my new payment's even higher. Well, all of that is true because when and until you permanently get modified, the bank still views you as being late, even though you're making a trial payment uh, and it's and it's agreed upon. It like like in your example, it's from went from three to two, three thousand to two thousand. Um, the you know according to the bank and according to the computer and according to servicing, you're still late and you're falling further and further behind every time you make that new uh, trial Minimal payment. payment. Yeah. Um, however, if you w- once the uh, trial period is up, generally uh, you'll then be approved for a permanent modification. Now, sometimes the banks are so overwhelmed, they're slow with that, so it may be six or seven months until you get your permanent documents, but what we usually have told people is continue making your trial payment until you get your permanent uh, documents that tell you otherwise. Now, and jump in if you have any questions, John. I'm just uh, hogging. So, some some people are getting advised through bankruptcy attorneys during the modification to go into bankruptcy, but that, that kind of throws a wrench into your deal, doesn't it? It, it absolutely does, because then the, the bank has to treat it completely differently and s- basically start the process over. And when when someone's in bankruptcy, you know, there's there's different legal things about can we talk to the customer right. or not, and all of that. So it kind of throws it does throw a monkey wrench into it. So so if you're if you're in a if you're in a mod, you know you, you and I'm not sure if you can declare bankruptcy on other things and not put the mortgage in there. I don't think you can, but I don't know. But in, 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 and I'm seeing as I'm seeing as much. I think uh, you know uh, again I'm not understanding. I think you can, but most people do throw that in there because that's kind of the reason that they they, that, it, that they triggered do have them to into stop it. foreclosure yeah. or whatever the case right. you know, yeah. might be. Yeah. So, in your experience, just from the ones that you dealt with, out of out of all the, uh, let's say you put a hundred people in into the trial period, how many people actually? Got a you know got a, tr- a modification. You know, once you're in trial, um, it, w- it was it was pretty automatic. It, it really was. Now getting there, it, it, you know, can take time and a lot of effort. And just because you want a modification doesn't mean you're going to get one. Again, you have to qualify. For yeah, you were we were talking before the show today that that so is, is underwriting trying to flush out. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there is a fair number of scammers in there who just can afford to do what they're doing. They're just looking around and going, well. Kevin got one, and Billy got one, and my neighbor's house is only worth 200, and I owe three, so I'll, I'll go after one too, and and that kind of jams the system up. But but they're there, I'm sure. That that I believe that that, that absolutely happens. Um, but as long as you know they've submitted their paperwork and they can justify everything, and their tax returns show this, and that we can see that their income went from X to Y. Uh, and we can, you know, we verify all of that, and and as long as then their income is enough to make the princi- the trial payment, because some people say, well, yeah, I lost my job. Well, if you lost your job, you can't afford any payment, whether it's right one dollar. So tri- a tri- trial's not going to so, help you. No, exactly. So that's why you have to qualify, just like you do when you get a new mortgage. So and so here here's my contention, and we we got to take a break at the top of the hour, but is that if if your modification is only going to take all the interest you didn't pay and put it on the backside, and you were already upside down to begin with, hell, you're never going to get out of that. I mean, you're, you're going to be constantly buried forever. I mean, I think you have to be realistic and say, okay, if I if I short sold the home today, then everything is done, and I can go rent what I can afford, and then I can theoretically be back in the process in three years. If I go through this trial, or I go through the trial I'm accepted, and I keep paying on this house, Yes, the market's picking up, but so my interest keeps getting added because I'm. In, well, no, in, it's, it's, it stops. You know, basically the interest doesn't continue to get added. It got, it got put on the back, but in many cases, um, the bank would, would then, after the fact, go back and send Drop. you a letter six months, a year later, and say, you know what, that's gone, that's forgiven. Okay. So basically, it, it got stopped. It, w- it wouldn't continue to grow. Okay. But basically, the government has been pressuring the banks to write these things down. Okay. And to make them. Right, if that's the right word, and then bring them to a point where that's gone. 
But, so, and writing down, you mean writing down the principal and interest payment or the balance? Writing down the balance, which, yeah, which, which okay, then makes off that. The accrued that, interest. The yeah. Okay, and then, re, and then recalculating the payment based on that. Okay. No, well, no, the payments then stays the same because the payment that you'd be, you'd be making on the trial would not be including that piece that right. they okay. put on the back. Okay. All right, well, that, make, that makes sense. So it's... And, then, and lastly, because what, what are your thoughts on a third-party modification company? You know, um, in most cases, it wasn't helpful. If the customer has or had a problem, they should call their lender and work it out and, and follow whatever the lender says. You know, if they say, you know, here, we're going to try to qualify, qualify you for a modification, send me this, 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 and this, and they'll walk you through the process. Generally, if, if, if you went through a third party, basically all that is is then we're going to ask that party for it, and Maybe. then they're going to turn around and ask you. For a and fee, if, usually. And, and, and for a fee, which so many people got burned with that. Right. So right. many people got burned. Right. And that, that, that's my concern. It's the same thing as the uh, biweekly payment, you know, using a using an outside service to do a biweekly payment. Why on earth would you send your money to Gary's company so he can accumulate the interest so you can send it? You know, it, it just doesn't work. So anyway, Mark, I appreciate it very much. Oh, no problem, that's, that's a good good education. And uh, that music means we got to take another quick break. We're going to take a break for the top of the hour. This is Talk of Money. We're live at the Purple Place Restaurant, El Dorado Hills. Coming back, we'll talk a little Big Wake weekend. Give away some uh, baseball, some motocross, some boating, whatever. We'll be right back. Talking money. Yeah, I get it. You're an outcast. Always under attack. Always coming in last. Bring it up the past. No one owes you anything. I think you need a shotgun blast to kick in the ass. So pay. Let's get back to action with Talking Money and your host, Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Good morning. It's like uh, the breakfast crowd is uh, like a new group of people showing up and coming in and out. We are up at the uh, Purple Place Restaurant up in El Dorado Hills. We've been uh, talking about the Big Wake weekend for oh, weeks now, if not, if not months now. And uh, joining me, Bob Richardson has stepped in, and he's been uh, mobbed by people wanting free T-shirts and beach balls and tickets and all kinds of things. So I really appreciate you showing up here and uh, giving away all your goodies and, and uh, coming up to talk about the Big Wake Weekend. How are well, you doing? Jeff, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So this is a busy time for you because you have, uh, see, next weekend is Hangtown. So the weekend after next is uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, correct? Actually, three uh, weeks away, weekend right? a- Yeah, weekend after Hangtown is Memorial Weekend. We're the weekend after Memorial Weekend. Oh, okay, so you got, yeah. you got a little bit little yeah. bit of breathing room still. 20 days. Okay. 20 days. It's tightening up, though. Yeah, the last 20. So how how long ago did you st- – when, when did you start actually – all the marketing and just the planning for this week, this at the end of the month. Well, Jeff, we, uh, myself, I um, actually with my lovely girl walked out to uh, the exhibition in September of 2011 just as a fan. Uh-huh. I'm a Folsom resident, and uh, a good friend of mine, Bob Lino, who actually is a promoter for the Sacramento Mile, invited me out to see this exhibition of these incredible boats and uh so i went out there just to check it out and where was that that was actually at the granite bay state park okay where they where the actually the event site is now okay and so h1 uh, brought out four boats and, and the interesting thing about h1 h1 unlimited hydroplane series the commissioner sam cole is from elk grove oh okay yeah so uh the commissioner's from uh elk grove Steve Holden, who is a, a very dear friend of Sam's and now of mine, is actually a resident of Folsom. Okay. And then Dave Gotti and Julie Gotti, who are uh, Canyon Marketing, are the PR and media department for H1, the residents of El Dorado Hills. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah, so it was very interesting uh, that the a lot of the makeup and infrastructure is right here in Northern California. Right. Now, the, 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 the H1 is, and I don't follow a lot of boat racing, okay. but it's a, it's, a, it's a tour that's traveling around. Yes. How many stops do they generally make in a year? We're doing nine right now. We do two overseas, seven stateside. It looks like we're going to add China in 2014. Okay, so the Big Wake Weekend is the whole series. So it's not that's not just the name for the Folsom one. That's all of them. No, actually, the Big Wake Weekend is the name for just the Folsom Sacramento. Okay. Event. Each event has its own name. Its own little moniker, okay. Gold Cop. Tri Cities Water Follies, Seattle Sea Fair, San Diego Bay Fair. I, I, I was asking John. It seems to me that there was there was some H1 races on the river 
like 10 or 12 years ago. Am I remembering that right? Yeah, that is correct. They're just a smaller version. It would be more like, um, and no offense but to the, that series, it's more like AAA baseball. Okay. You've got what we're bringing. We're bringing 11 3,000 horsepower, 200 mile per wow. hour. H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes, this is the Formula One of boat racing. This is the top of the top. Okay, and I think the ones on the river might even have been outboards at, at the time. Yeah, I don't, yeah. That would, and we're actually bringing that series, too. That's called the Western Formula Lights, and those are a hoot to watch. They run on a mile and a quarter course. They're, they run about 140 miles an hour, but when they take a turn, it would literally make them. Yeah, in. make your teeth come out yeah, of your mouth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, It's, it's like watching those fishermen trying to get the, 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 You watch those guys go by on their fishing boats. Like, where are you guys going? You can buy fish at the store. You don't have to be in such a hurry. So let me ask you, let's, let's, I, w- I was on your website, and, and there's a lot of things in here I found very interesting. W- number one is the question John asked you there before the show. How in the hell do you get the state of California to allow you to close down probably the number one recreational facility in the state of California? If it's not number one, it's number two in terms of just in terms of generate. I mean, that's, that is quite an accomplishment. I mean, how, how, do, they, how do you even approach somebody to, to do that and is that accurate is the whole lake closed down for that, that weekend excellent questions and and i can't take and I, I will not take the credit for the start of it um as i mentioned steve holden steve five years ago went to uh the california state parks and started the process of inquiring about it at the time it just wasn't the right fit so obviously with budget constraints and things of that nature um they were more, more open to the opportunity and a gentleman named peter mcdermott um, started the process along with Sam Cole several years ago. I actually came on board, as I said, September of last year, full time, March of 2012. But basically, what we did was we made a proposition, a proposal to the California State Parks um, to add a significant amount of revenue to that park. And the great thing about this partnership with the parks is that all the fees that we are submitting, that we are basically paying to rent the park stay at that park. Oh, so nice. within the Folsom sector That's awesome. for operations and for maintenance to the park. And if you've been out to the park, I mean, they run a, an immense, it's a huge park yeah. with not a lot of people. Right. So we're out there, we're beautifying the park, we're bringing in private landscapers and assets to really make it look like a world-class venue during race weekend. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny, if you, if you relate what the state of California has learned from the Hangtown event, and and that department, you know, they they have become partners with dirt diggers, and they have realized that you know not only do they make money from it, and so does the state. They realize it's, it's such a phenomenal venue, and they've, and they've learned to partner up to and, and do these kind of things. It just seems to me. So, is, am, am I accurate? Is the lake, is Folsom Lake, shut down for that whole weekend? No, actually, and and it's probably one of the one of the most common questions we get. Believe it or not, we're only taking up, the race course itself only takes about 15, maybe 20% of the lake, if that even. I would probably say less. It's a two-mile oval for the big boats, a mile and a quarter for the smaller boats. All we are is we are racing, competing out in front of Granite Bay. Okay. So we're not coming down to the dam. We're not coming over to the Folsom Point or the Browns Ravine. And we're, and we're not closing any part of the waterways in the lake, the South Fork, the North Fork anything of that nature. What we are doing is we do have a fairly large restricted area off the competition course, which is important for for your listeners to know, um, that basically we'll have almost a half a mile safety perimeter around the course. So it's a little more, it's a little challenging just to drop your boat in and say, hey, let's go watch the races. You'll be pretty far away. Yeah, so I just have I just have visions of a hydroplane boat and some dumbass on his tuber <laughs> coming together. Doing the backstroke. And, and well, I'm sure it would be a great YouTube video. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to be on either end of that. But um, so the race, the race course itself, so the Granite Bay ramp, you come out the end of Douglas, the Granite Bay ramp there, is that kind of the, the viewing area? So you don't have Building the uh, Granite Bay State Park on Tuesday after Memorial Week at 6 a.m. We were putting in lake, luxury lakefront hospitalities. We're putting in sky boxes. We're putting in bleachers, beautiful grandstand. Heineken, uh, Nationwide Insurance, Red Bull, Toyota, Roseville Automall, all big sponsors. So we're bringing major assets to it. And we are real. If any real estate, you're familiar with Sonoma Raceway, what was the last year's point? Yeah. It's going to look a lot like Like that. Yeah. That's a great trick. And I have to actually give a little shout out to Sonoma Raceway and the folks down there because a lot of their infrastructure and a lot of their personnel are coming out to help execute this race weekend. Okay, very cool. Um, So another thing, so you can't, you can. 
So let's talk about how you can see the race. You can show up and, and I guess you, this thing says do not show up without a ticket. Great. Thank you for asking. So everybody, uh, again, because of what we've done with the park, because of the amount of uh, effort and quite honestly the finances that it has taken to bring this, I mean, we're just looking at just shy of a million dollars to bring this event to the area. So what we have is it's no different than a basketball game, a football game, or any other stadium, indoor or outdoor. We have to sell tickets for them. Right. And so what we are going to do is what we have done is we're selling our tickets online. Okay. And um, you redeem that ticket for a wristband. We can do that right at the end of basically Douglas Boulevard and Alden Folsom Road. And then you come into the event site with an event wristband. Okay. So can you – and so I know – I see where the boat – there's a boat set up there uh, on the left side there. So that's where you're going to be redeeming your for your tickets? Or? We actually uh, – starting next week, it'll be on the other side. Okay, the bigger um, parking lot yeah, there. So yeah, so in uh, right next to Bank of America in the little shopping center yep. there, we're going to have will call, ticketing, and the whole nine yards there. In addition, uh, uh, for the fans, for the GA tickets and things of that nature, we've rented Sierra College Boulevard, the whole parking lot. So on Saturday Sunday, you can actually go there, redeem your tickets there, or purchase tickets there. Free shuttle ride. Free From Sierra parking. College? Yes. Okay. Both both free. But and don't show up at the lake trying to get no, in. No, do not show up, and do not show up at the lake without a parking permit. The parking at the lake is... Uh, fairly challenging, only because we're building out the event so much. Right. So we'll park about 70 percent of the folks off site. Okay. Now, if so, let's talk about the diff- so you can you can show you can buy a pass and you can watch it in the grandstands. But you can, there are some passes you can buy. You can and you can put your boat in the water and watch it from the water. That's correct, and that's uh, actually we've already sold out of the first level of that. And okay. Probably only about 20 so left on the second level of it, and it's a really, really cool package. It's called now it's called the Anchorage Premium Package. But basically, what we did was we constructed a log boom that will float in the water. That 35 lucky folks now uh, actually will probably end up being 135 by the time they right. move their boats up. Right. I'm getting actually it's like being at the 50 yard line. Okay. Front row at a football game. You are on the race course. Now you're at a safe distance away. I'd like to be right behind the yeah, starting point, please. Exactly. So, and it's really, and it's something I would probably say 90% of the folks that purchased it have never witnessed. So they get to tie up. They get to have a good time with their friends. They get to come back to the shore. We've got live entertainment. There's so many additional elements just on boat racing. Boat racing is probably about half of what we have in store for the weekend. Okay. So, so and a lot of people... I've probably never seen an H1 race. I have not. Um, I, I, cu- I cut and pasted some of the pictures from your website and put them on mine. And the, 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 I mean, the pictures are phenomenal. Um, so, what? But other than watching boat racing, John's John, John was mentioned some wakeboarding ex- exhibitions. What else is going on out there? So, uh, in, the, in the lake's getting a little finicky with us right now. Yeah. We we're anticipating the lake level to be a little bit higher. So, some of what we have right now is a little bit of a work in progress. A little, it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. However, we've got uh, the Hyperlight experience, which we've got all pro riders coming in from Florida, pro riders coming in from California, the best of the best. It's going to be a really, really neat visual on the water. They'll put jumps and ramps and bumps and things of that nature. Our goal is to have about an 800 foot cable system installed. Again, that'll be water level, lake level, depending. If we don't, then we'll tow with sea dews and uh, the, I think it's going to be a G23. Yeah, nice boat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I understand. So, yeah, so we've got the wakeboard hyperlight element. We've got the jet lab. I don't know if anybody has seen this. These are personal water packs. Oh, those are awesome. Oh, nice. So, so yeah, so he's going to be flying three times a day, and that's really cool. And then on top of that, we've got live music. We've got the Jeff Watson band. We've got a band called Conflict of Minerals. We've got um, drum and bugle pours coming. So it's going to be a full, full day. So you, you, so you've got, so is it Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Is that the three, three days? Three full days. Okay. It's open at seven on Friday, six a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, and I'm guessing they'll, they'll have all of the food and beer and sodas and all the stuff you want to. Yeah, um, we partnered actually with Randy Peters Catering, and yeah. they're going to provide a lot of what we do out there. And they've got some really, really neat, creative um, items for the menu. On, on top of that, Jeff, we're actually going out there, and we're we're, we're announcing that we're not doing ballpark arena price foods, five dollar. Yeah really inexpensive food or reasonably priced food I should say. So it's not a day it's not a deal where you're gonna go out there and get a fourteen dollar beer and a twenty dollar burger. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and I did notice this. That this might interest a lot of people with RVs. So you can buy. An, is that still open? Where you can We've buy? We've got eight of them left. You've got eight, eight left. Yeah, so if eight you, spots left. If you got if you got your own RV and you want to go out there for the weekend and not have to deal with the traffic, right. that yeah. might be the way and to that's go. That's a real premium package too. Oh, easy. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good to go. Okay, what else should we know? Big Wake Prison Break. I see you just scanned that. We've got a few of those left. That's your VIP on off the water experience. 
So basically what that is, is what we've done is created almost like an outdoor bistro or restaurant at the lake. So you can get beer and wine service, you can order a, you can order a food, you can sit down and watch this incredible event take place. So it's a true VIP experience. Now, so, so from the shores, are you going to be able to see everything you need to see, or, do, or are there going to be screens? I, I know some, some events you go to, they put up, they'll put up a screen if you can't see what's going on. Right. There. We actually contemplated that. I, I think for year one, what we're going to do is you can see just about 90% of the race course. In some areas, you'll see the whole thing. Um, but, again, because of the lake level, it's created a little bit of a challenge course. And as anybody's been out to uh, Granite Bay, they've got some trees that actually you go right up in the middle of the lake. Yes, they do. That are going to show a little bit. But uh, other than that, I think you'll, you'll, you'll absolutely, from the shoreline, the main beach area is our GA area. Shade, picnic tables, barbecues, easy ups are allowed. Beach chairs, we encourage it. We want you to bring it out. Little coolers are allowed. The biggest thing, no bottles, no booze is what we say. So those okay. are the two big things. No pets. All right. So, and we're going to give away, we've got to take a, take a break here in just a second. We're going to give away a uh, pair of passes to the Friday event. We'll do that here in just a minute. John will come up with some kind of qu- quiz question. Oh, he's got something in his mind there. And um, so keep in mind, if you, if you remember nothing else, remember this. Don't show up at the gate without your ticket. So buy, you can buy online. It's, uh, the website is bigwakeweekend.com. It's all one word, bigwakeweekend.com. You can uh, pay there. You can redeem it for a pass uh, before you get out there. You can park at Sierra College. Sierra College, and we just rented a, we're calling it 20 acres, which is on the corner of Folsom Auburn and Douglas Boulevard. So right a mile away from the event site, and that's only $5 parking, and it comes with a free shuttle also. Okay. So and then and then the, the so the lake is not shut down. So if you're going out there boating, just go uh, up the North Fork or right. or the South Fork. Go up one of those ways and stay out of the way. I think the biggest thing there, if I may, is is there's no access into the event site on, via a boat without a log boom or anchorage permit. You have to have that. We are only selling a total of 100 of those, and we've got about 73 of them sold right now. Okay, so very good. You want to uh, come up with something ge- ingenious there? I can yes, come sure. up with something ingenious. You want me to give you, you a question? Something? Yeah. So even better. We, we be actually great. have about 10 questions that we always ask. and So you guys already asked a lot of good ones. But I think the, the one that we actually get um, we get the, the most is, you know, can I drive it? So can I drive the boat? So I think from that standpoint, I would, if somebody can answer within 10 miles an hour, what is the top speed? Top speed of an H1. Yes, unlimited hydroplane. Unlimited hydroplane. And those, uh, is, is that engine, is it, a, is it a jet engine? It's a Chinook helicopter motor, runs on jet fuel. And I heard 3,000 horsepower? 3,000 horsepower. And do you give it for salt water or fresh water? Because there's about a 20 mile an hour difference. Yeah, well, I know the salt water is faster. Yes, exactly. So we'll do the fresh water since we're going to be go. at. Uh, we're going to be on the freshwater lake. Yeah, not, not a lot of sharks out in Folsom this week. A few, few minnows, but not a lot of sharks. So within 10 miles an hour, what is the top speed? One of the boats coming up uh, on the Big Wake weekend, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. You can text us at 44-1140. Bob Richardson from the Big Wake weekend. Is this uh, one of many to come, we hope? Gonna... That's uh, that's the whole goal, Jeff. We've got so much tied up into the financial end of it. We need to make this Sacramento's, Folsom's, Granite Bay, El Dorado's. This has got to be the event to hang their hat on. Perfect. Well, I appreciate it so much. so much. Very much. Yeah, awesome having, having you here. Down. Appreciate it. We'll uh, take the quiz, the, the quiz winner and give a pair of tickets. You know the answer to that. Within 10 miles an hour, how fast will these boats go? This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell. It's John Fodero. We're going to be right back, Jack. Talking Money. And we're back. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. We'll give this back to uh, appreciate it. That's for our winners there. Okay. We are back live. Gary, you can put that back on if you want. At the Purple Palace. At the Purple, purple, place. purple place. I would say Purple Palace. Purple Place here in El Dorado Hills. You're thinking uh, like Vegas type stuff there. <laughs> so we did get a uh, we did get a quiz winner to um, our question within 10 miles an hour. Yeah, we'll just put them all together. We'll, we'll figure it out. This is which? Okay, gotcha. All right. We got all kinds of stuff to figure out. I don't know. I'm gonna have 65 things hanging off my arm, and uh, but I was looking. One for, of them will get you in. <laughs> one, two of them will get me arrested, and one of them will get me in. There you go. But we will uh, figure that out. Thanks to uh, Bob for joining us. The answer, if you were within uh, 10 miles an hour for these boats, was 210 miles an hour. That's right, and Kevin got it right. Absolutely 210 amazing. 210 miles an hour. You look. At, you look. <laughs> at, I'm just stuck on the 3,000 horsepower thing. You look at some of the pictures of those, and I, I, I've seen a few guys with their old flat-bottom boats in the 70s doing similar maneuvers there <laughs> that they shouldn't have been doing. But, uh, yeah, that'll be 
be a fun weekend. It just you you I, it marvels me the amount of energy and quite frankly the amount of cash. So Bob said they're you know they're in about a million bucks just getting this thing together and promoted and and put together. Um, I hope I hope that it gets that it gets a good turnout. It would be nicer if there was we had a little more water this year, a little, little, little higher lake level. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you got to do with what you got to do. It's like it's like the ski resorts, right? It, it snows or it doesn't snow. Either yeah. way, either way, we're open. And that's so. Um, but it's nice they're bringing that to the uh, North State. Yeah, I think I think it will be. I mean, this is such a huge boating community that it, you know it's like anything. It's it, it just it's going to take some time to build, and, and um, so hopefully we'll do our part, get the message out, and we'll give out some tickets and get some people around, uh, make it work. Good. I Big think. wake weekend. Yep. Uh, if you want to jump in today, three three nine eleven forty. 1-800-920-1140 is our number. You can text us at 44-1140. I really appreciated Mark coming on and talking about the the, the loan mods. Um, yes. There is nothing more frustrating and confusing than that whole process. Definitely. And, um, you know, he he worked for one of the big banks, and they were the one of the ones that really got their hands slapped and were, you know, are scrutinized. There's a lot of... What I would call second tier, second tier lenders and, and servicing companies that don't have the manpower or won't spend the staff to get it done, you know, get it done properly. And um, I'm, I still think you have to ask yourself, is this the right plan for me? I mean, if you're, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars upside down and paying twice as much as you can rent a similar unit for, mm-hmm. I, I don't advocate anybody walk away from from a commitment you made but be realistic about your commitment if you you know if your income has changed or something's changed in your life are you really going to be able to pull, pull this together and you know and get out of this problem or you yeah, and that's that's really what the, the mods are for is when you've had a hardship and you can't afford that payment right now not not that you're 200 grand underwater or something of that sort and and that's I think that's part of the challenge when some of the borrowers out there submit to this they're submitting their application thinking, well, I'm underwater and, you know, I want a lower payment. It's really there was a hardship and I really can't make my payment. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, uh, he, he's, that's why I want him to come on because, I mean, that's all they did all day long. He's seen all the good examples of things and I only hear about the bad. Exactly. And that's all I ever hear, too, is the bad side. So to hear that they were doing them, they're doing them properly, they're getting them done is uh, a little bit enlightening. I, I think do. one of the frustrating things, though, as a homeowner in that situation, so short sailing and having to get out of your home because they won't remodify your loan or do the modification, but they're willing to sell your home at the lower rate to somebody else. Right. So you're walking out, somebody else is moving in at a lower rate that I could have paid that rate. Right. Right. It, it, so, it, it, very good point, Gary. I mean, it's like. Okay, you know, if, if the true market value on a short sale is 210 and I owe you 310 and if I leave, you're going to sell it for 210 less fees. Mm-hmm, exactly. Why not give it to me for 210 um, and, I, and the only logic that can be there is that, that it would incentivize more homeowners to do the same thing. So I'm not going to reward you, the homeowner, for skipping out $100,000 debt to me. Correct. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to move on move on with somebody else and you're going to pay the penalty for that. But that that is kind of a uh, you know, the same person the same homeowner would tell you, "Well, hell, we spent uh, how many billions of dollars rewarding the bank and bailing them out for doing things, you know, that they shouldn't have done. Why why don't I get a step up in line and you know, and get mm-hmm. bailed out too?" So I think that's a very good point. I think the banks have um, either been forced or come to the conclusion that it's cheaper for them in the long run to try to figure out how to keep you there, um, even if it means getting a little less payment, having the house go vacant, having to fix it up, and then having to resell it, and that whole process, and by the way, we're not getting any payments the whole time that goes on, is not in their best interest. Yeah, right. It just took them a while to figure that out, <laughs> um, but, but they're starting to figure it out. Uh, I do want to bring up one other thing, another kind of a common theme that, that's, that was over the last week or two, and, and that is... I guess two points. One of them is that um, I, I'm very frustrated with bankruptcy, with the bankruptcy. I don't know if I, I don't know if you say the attorneys or the process. I'm not sure which, but bad bad information is getting is being passed around, and and um, and I'm starting to see a lot of this now of, of people whose houses go into bankruptcy, but they don't give the house back. They keep the house, mm-hmm. but so they're still making their payments, but the creditor considers the account closed. So it's not on their credit report, and then they call us and they want to refinance, and and the and the, the lender is considered the loan done, but the lender keeps taking the payments. <laughs> so 
I think my, my suggestion to you is if you're, if you're contemplating a bankruptcy and it involves a mortgage and you want to stay there, that you understand or you're getting you know, very clear with the lender that I want to, and there's a term for it, I just went blank on it, um, I was going to say reclassify, but basically you, you want to recommit to the, to the mortgage. Maybe they all have to be thrown in there in order to reorganize everything. But I think that immediately upon exiting the, the bankruptcy, you or your attorney needs to contact your existing lender and say, hey, you know what, we want to we want to keep this mortgage going. We never stop making payments to you. We don't intend to leave. And I want you to consider my account good. And or if it's if it was late, then consider it late, but consider it open, please. And then, you know, and accept my payments and and report it as properly. Because what I'm what I'm seeing is that a lot of people are going into foreclosure. I'm excuse me, going into bankruptcy. Their house goes in with them, and then they kind of just put their head in the sand and they don't really know. You know, what does that mean? And the, the the biggest one, I think, is one of John's clients, it happened to John's clients, and I'll mention this again, is that you just because the lender quits calling you doesn't mean things are all done. It does mean that perhaps they can't get any money from you, but it doesn't necessarily mean they were in a big-ass rush to get your house <laughs> out of your name. And so you kind of forget about it or you ignore it, or maybe the second mortgage is kind of still out there. And what I'm seeing is the second mortgages are still reporting you late every single month, right? Even if they've been bankrupt and, and or foreclosed, and so that still goes on. And then the first maybe didn't foreclose on you right away, so you have got to be proactive exactly. with your own finances. It's only yes. you that gets hurt, and that's why I, th- I I just think the short sale is such a if you can, if they'll accept it and if you can go that route is such a better process mm-hmm. because it ends and you know it ends. And there's a date, and you know what the right. date is. The sale's done, you get a HUD-1, you yeah. move on. Yeah, and it's not, well, my house is tied up. I don't know, do I own it? Do I not own it? I'm not sure. Well, I haven't made payments on it. I still live here. I don't still live here. Right, right. And then and the other point I want to bring to you, let's say everything just goes perfectly fine. You know, you're, you had a foreclosure three years ago or a bankruptcy two years ago. That's fine. The waiting period, two years after a bankruptcy, three years after a foreclosure, is only the beginning. Okay, that's... That's the minimum threshold to get back in the door. Yeah, there's and, no guarantee at that right? point that you can purchase. That's right. And, and so many people have called us and said, well, hey, I'm three years past a foreclosure or short sale or I'm two years past a, a bankruptcy. I'm ready to go again. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, wh- what have you done in the interim? Well, what do you mean? Hell, I'm not using any credit, dude, because last time they didn't go well. Yeah. Okay, so subsequently to losing your house or going bankrupt, you have absolutely had nobody extend you any credit at all. So you've proven nothing to the to the world. Yeah, that that that's worse, or as bad as the bankruptcy or the foreclosure. So you must immediately be proactive, and, and I mean immediately, like yes, go to your bank and say, "Hi, my name's Gary. Here's a thousand dollars. Put it in an account and give me a five hundred dollar credit card, not a debit card. I need credit. Go to your gas station or whatever you got to do. You have got to build some credit, and you've got to use it. You've got to pay it back. You've got to get going on it because what happens is. These loans come back, and we run them through what's called an automated approval system. It's a artificial underwriting, if you will. There's not an individual. The system comes back and tells us yes or no. And if it's a no, the only way you can get around that is to, to physically go to an underwriter and have them override the no. And this happened to me this week on, on a VA borrower. It's not impossible. And a lot of times the reason it says no is it just saw you had a foreclosure and it said, whoa, this might be a high risk. We better have someone take a look at it. Yeah. That's not the end of the world. But for, for a lender to sell that loan and get their money out of it is much easier if they have a yes. If they have a no, then Gary, the underwriter, has to look at that file and say, okay, John, you had the foreclosure. I can, I can see you had some issues in the past. I see why it gave you a no. But I also see this. I see that you, you know, your job was in trouble in the past and is better now. I see that you went out and immediately got some credit or you kept some credit. I see that you've built up some good savings and have some good reserves. I, I mean, all the issues you tell me happened to you, I see where you resolved them. You've made some movement so that doesn't happen again. And I'm willing to put my name on as an underwriter on that file and say, you know what? Yes, John had trouble in the past, but it's I see that he's resolved it. And that's a big difference. And and so please, if that's you mm-hmm. and, and you're coming on the two or three year mark, please make sure that you have and, and 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 all too often, you know, they woke up on January 1st or February 1st. They said, and John's wife said, hey, dummy, I'm tired of renting. Let's go buy again. And John, oh, okay. You know, and, and on, on February 1st, he's ready to buy a house. But the last two and a half years, he hasn't done a damn thing. Exactly. 
and everything is a mess until the last 60 days. And, and, and if you don't think that an underwriter looks at that and goes, oh, okay, now he decided it's important, or she decided it's important. So for, for 45 days, they got their act together. For two and a half years, they've, they've done nothing. That isn't going to work. No. It isn't going to work. So you're going to have to, you know, you have to do a little bit of pro- proactive planning. And I understand it's frustrating, particularly if you just lost your house or you short sold it or it's foreclosed or you went through a bankruptcy. Your tendency is to say, I ain't ever doing this again. Yeah. This hurts too much. But two and a half, three years from now, you're going to feel a little different, right? Yeah. So. And just being on top of your finances, that's the biggest thing. I mean, I'm going through some stuff myself where, you know, going through divorce, you just get so fed up with all the bills and all the attorney's fees and all those things. And I just threw my hands up. I was just like, screw this. I, yep. don't, I don't care. You know, let this bill go. Let that bill go. And then you get wise. And it's like, I'm, I'm only hurting myself. Yeah, when it really hurts. And so now I'm dealing with credit issues where I had one account at one bank that went into collections, but two different companies bought it up. So I paid the one off. The other one still shows it. And I still have it on my yeah. report. So every month, delinquent, delinquent, not. Pay. And it's like, how do you go about fixing those things? And it's like, you don't realize. You know, that one, uh, who cares, is really going to bite you in the rear end yep. down the road. Yeah. And, and John and I, we, we teach, a, we teach a, a high school class on credit, and I, and I use this example every single class. I say, you know, one of you in this class is going to leave your apartment somewhere down the line, and your cable box is going to be sitting there, and you're going to say, ah, hell, I'm not taking that thing back. They can come find me. And they they don't care. They'll just put a minor collection, and it'll be like 118 bucks. And it will and, haunt you. And then it will, and, it, and it'll add interest, and then it'll get sold to somebody else, and then now you'll have two of them, and they'll both be at two and a quarter. And by the time you have, fi- it finally catches up with you when you're ready to buy something, or maybe when you're applying for a job, it's going to look like you're a flake, yeah. because it was inconvenient for you that one weekend to go return your, turn your cable box. And the yeah. same thing with, and, it, and we do a lot with the divorce cases, and. It, and in, in some aspect, the, one of the divorcing spouses says, you know what, I'm going to stick it to my other spouse. I'm not going to pay that damn thing because we're both on it. And they both they both screw up one another. Exactly. And really what you did is you just shot yourself in your left foot and your right foot. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's very difficult. And it's, it's those emotional ones that are very difficult to deal with. So I, I get you. That's, that's a great that's a great point. we got to take a break. Um, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. You can text us if you'd like at 441140. We have um, give another Hangtown pass away if you want, or some River Cats. Hangtown next weekend coming up quick. Okay, what do you got? So the uh, the dollar bill, the new dollar bill is coming out, and the question is outside of the president, who else has their signature on the dollar bill? There's a couple. Okay. Do you the position or the name? Uh, yeah, the position or the name. Position or the name. Okay. Yeah. If you name yeah. if you name them both, we'll give you we'll give you a pizza to go with your hometown. Right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Asian pizza. I like to call. Oh, I can't. I was gonna say. I, I was gonna give away a hint there, but I won't do that. We'll, we'll see if anybody gets that. Three three nine eleven forty. One eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. You can text us at forty four eleven forty. This is talking money. We are live from the Purple Place Restaurant in Eldorado Hills. Got about uh, oh, twenty minutes or so. If you want to step in and say hi, we'll be here. If not, you can help us pack up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Back to talking money, and here's Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How's everybody doing? We're wrapping up here. Last little segment. Lots of things going on at the Purple Place here in El Dorado Hills. I think I've uh, screwed up my microphone now for the end of the. Yeah, thing. mine's all whacked out too. <laughs> or oh, I blew up my eardrum. One of the two. Either way, we are uh, last segment of the day. Appreciate uh, Gary coming down. Thank you so much. Glad to uh, glad to have you. You can. Uh, you can win lots of things on on Facebook if you pay attention to our Facebook page, which does roll over to the JeffCarbell.com site, and I think that they also rolls over to Twitter. So one way or another, you ought to be able to find us. And if you can't, you're just not paying attention, or we're hiding from you, one of the two. <laughs> it could be one of John's ex-wives. There's four or five of them running around. Yeah, there. right. <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> Thankfully not. Thankfully not. We have uh, our last segment of the day. She jumped in the big chair, Lisa Clark, Lisa McGovern Clark. You never talk on the radio, do you? Never. Never. Hold on, I got to turn your mic on. It's only taken Jeff 15 years to 
to get me on the show. Well, there is a great political risk by having you know having a, our a PR team on there. So, what do you do? What are you doing up here, by the way? Well, I'm up here making sure everybody got up here today to talk about the big wake weekend. And Hold this in front of you. You've been, this is radio. This, you, the purple place. There you go. It's like you. Money show. All the guests. All and, the guests. So and, and all our river cats and our golf and our artisan pizzas. Art, artisan pizzas and gym boys and don't forget the skiing. And the ski. Oh yeah. Because yeah. you owe me for that. Skiing. Yeah, lots of skiing. And so all of this. I was disappointed in my ski season this year, the local ski season. But anyway. It just wasn't long enough. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. There wasn't enough. It just snow. wasn't enough. No, and wasn't. now the the poor boater guys have to run around in the mud out there. Well, it was really interesting getting to pull together the Big Wake weekend and get a hold of Bob Richards and Mike here at the Purple Place. Both um, businesses have been around town forever, and what Jeff does best is come out and pour myself out, talk to people about <laughs> what they do, and bring them on his radio show, and that's what I help coordinate. Yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of great sponsors that we've had over the years. We've talked about some of them. But am, I, am I dying, by the way? Are you dying? <laughs> this is your going away show. Have I been canceled? Everything <laughs> in the past. Like, but first of all, that thing on your lip is cancerous, and second of all, the station's closing down next week. No, Thanks no. For joining did us. you get the memo from CBS <laughs> Radio? Not, not yet. They're but towing your car. I know that. <laughs> not yet, but um, I think we are on our 10-year anniversary this year. I know uh, Gary was asking us how long have you been doing this, and I know that the, the twins. I said I said were in first grade. My wife said no, dummy. They were in kindergarten when you started doing this, and they're going to be they're finishing their freshman year. So that's coming up on 10 years if, if you're good with numbers, depending on which wh 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 where you started in there. So that's, that's okay. A few, that's a few Saturdays. That's quite a few Saturdays in a row there. So. Yeah, yep. They, back in the day, the the kids were so small they would sit outside in the little chairs. Yep. And now they don't come. No, I know. They don't care. Yeah, they, now, they're either mortified if I say their name on the radio or don't say their name on the radio, or, or their teachers want me to say their name on the radio. It's it's uh it's all good, but yeah. it's fun. Yeah. So uh, what's happening in your marketing world? Well, lots of social media, lots of digital media, lots of radio, television, and, um, you know, keeping people's names out there is what I do and come up with custom marketing plans that are individualized. Are you do you think you're seeing more social media stuff because it's cheaper and easier to do? Because, I mean, you know, buying a radio commercial or TV commercial is expensive. So, obviously, if you're starting up a venture, you're not going to go out and, you know, in most cases, start a hundred thousand dollar contract on the t on the TV isn't going to work. Right. So, are you finding a lot of social media success? Well, definitely for certain businesses, it can be successful. For example, a restaurant. Uh, social media can be just great. Uh, a mortgage company or a heating and air company, not so much. Yeah. So it depends on who's their, who their audience is and exactly what they're trying to accomplish. But usually, a media mix is what works. But Social media is definitely, and video is what's on the horizon for a website, and you know it yeah. goes viral. Ryan, who's just back there behind us, who does who produced some of our uh, website stuff, is you know always always trying to get me to to film something. He's like you know he's whatever whatever the you know topic of the week is, rather than just typing it in Facebook or tweeting about it, just, you know film. Do a do a, 30, a 60 second clip and put it on. And I said, Brian, have you seen me on TV? I mean, have you seen me? I don't look good on TV. You're going to be distracted by my big fat head <laughs> versus the message. But but he, you know, I, you hear that a lot. In fact, it was so strange is that I got this morning from AT and T. I got a uh, an email saying you can view you can view a video of your bill. I'm like, now why the hell would I want to view a video of numbers? But but the, I guess it's a video explaining that you know this portion of your bill is toward this and this is this and if you want to reduce this I didn't watch it I thought, it was, I thought that was see, weird see I agree with you because uh, you get all this video stuff and I mean we're so trapped for time now all of a sudden we're going to sit and watch a video where I don't get it but it, it seems to be the thing that everybody wants to do well that's exactly what I heard in the last uh, marketing meeting I was in is that go to video and sit your audience down let them watch it because they don't want to read it anymore. They well, want to see I, I do. A visual. I do think you can. Um, so, for example, I, I did. I did uh, a couple of them recently. I did one for the reverse mortgage, which I do think is um, more helpful than 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 reading it because there are some um, there's some inflection and some sincerity uh, and some level of trust you can 
hopefully get across in a video, or like the like I found in the radio, where they can at least listen to you, that you can't put in text. If I hand you a flyer here, John, here's a flyer on reverse mortgages. You know, you're gonna you're not gonna get the same feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that our company did did some did some video for recruiting too, which mm-hmm. was. Uh, more of kind of a testimonial, you know. What, what you know, I, I had another company. I didn't work at this company to begin with. I, cl- I shut my company down and came over, and we recruit people. That, we get a lot of people that way. So why, you know, what, what what brought you over? What made you want to come over to do that? So I think that some of those things in video are easy to, easier to communicate than they are through print. Mm-hmm. But I, but I'm, I am a little bit like John. It's like even when I see. You know, on Facebook, or people send me, "Hey, look at this cool video link." It's like I look at it, I'm like, "That's gonna be like two minutes." I don't want to sit here and watch two minutes. What you might think is funny, but I think you're just stupid. Right. You know, so I, so I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted on whether the, you know, the video. Well, it's a media mix that works. That's it. Yes. So, so you, you don't do all video, and you don't do all this or you all don't, that. Don't, and you, you individualize and customize your plan for your audience. And it's something Jeff's done a great job of over the last 15 years. Been very consistent and keeping his name out there, keeping his commercials fresh and his show, you know, interesting. And Yeah, uh, I think what I learned a little bit this week, I did a little, little bit of traveling and was was looking at some other ideas in the mortgage business, other opportunities for us, and we were looking at companies that were strictly um, Internet only. Mm-hmm. So what I, w- I would call our company primarily well, like a boots on the ground. We know, you know, we have agents, John knows, you know, 10 realtors and 20 financial planners and 2,000 prior customers. That's a guy who's constantly reaching out to each one of them, and, and we were looking at companies that are, don't know anybody. I mean, they just strictly are Zillow and Bankrate, and you know, and they and they get their leads off of that. And, and and it's interesting because I think that people believe that well, just because I created the JeffTarbell.com website, you know, and I posted on on XYZ site, you know, I'll have a flood of traffic coming to me. And, and these guys were looking at me going and saying, you don't you don't understand how how many many years and years and years and years of building you know, that following and the follow through ratio and the good the good comments to go with it, you know, the, to get us at least so you're in the, we're in the top five you can see. You know, and then of course you gotta be competitive there, which we almost always are, but just to get there, you know, isn't a matter of just saying, Well I'll pay, you know, fifty bucks a click or something like that. That's mm-hmm. paper that's a little different. So it was kind of an interesting, you know, learning experience this week on what um, what what some of they them they go through. And I can we compete against them all the time, right? So you I mean I, I always point out what they don't do well, and they always point out what we don't do well. And and um, but I can't, I can't get a borrower out of New Jersey. I mean, right. I'm not in New Jersey. I mean, I, so I, I my my window of opportunity is limited to California or plus or minus a couple of the little states. And these guys are sitting there in you know in Colorado or somewhere, and they're like, the whole world's open to us. Uh-huh. Oh, if, if, if we're getting a lot of traffic from XYZ state, well, hell, we'll send somebody out there get a license real quick and get ourselves licensed. So. It is. It's just. It's just been fascinating to me how many different ways there are to get business in our in, the, in just in the little window that I deal with. Mm-hmm. But and nobody does things the same. And so I always people always tell me, well, such such already does that. You know, there's already someone that's in that field. You just got to take. You got to take your business and, and just tweak it a little bit because mm-hmm. I look. I've looked at and met with probably 15, 20 mortgage companies. Some who wanted us to buy them. Some of who are just friends. And nobody. Does anything the same way? It is ridiculous. Everybody's got their own little click, 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 click little niche, you know, little, yeah, niche, little on niche. Yeah. Yep. So I'm with you. I, I don't think you can live. I don't think you can just stick by one thing. You got to mix it up. Agreed. Yeah, it's just like your financial plan. I mean, you can't just have all all blue chip stock. You dude, can't. I have all my money in pork bellies right now. <laughs> so go eat some more bacon, dude, and hurry up. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. All in pork bellies right now. <laughs> so that music means we're down to to two minutes. So if you want to, if you want to figure out where all the genius comes from, it talking money <laughs> you got to call lisa clark and do you want to give out your phone number because you do a lot of this for a lot of companies right? sure 716-2029 if you're looking for the genius behind jeff tarbell right that would be lisa that'd be lisa 716-2029 i thought that was kim uh, yeah we well, begged it, to differ I'm just kidding. when it comes to the giveaways and the goodies and the stuff it's lisa when lisa it comes does to, a great job comes to get, getting home with kim it's, it's all it's all women behind me i'm just i'm just like i'm like the wizard of oz just behind the curtain <laughs> and nothing exists behind the curtain that music means we got to wrap it up. I do appreciate and just am so grateful for the folks here at the Purple Place, for Bob at the Big Wake Weekend, and uh, for everybody for having us out. This was a great time. Nice to meet you. And Mike. Thank, thank you for coming out. And, um, yep, and Mike is at the Purple Place. Yep. So we enjoy doing this, and, and 
When John says this is like one of the nicest places we've ever been, believe me, it is. We, are normally <laughs> we don't even have to go outside in the parking lot and get locked out in the snow. <laughs> and we're going to see you at Hangtown next weekend, right, Jeff? That's Hangtown right. live next okay. weekend. And so you won't be able to hear, but Jeff will be there. I'll be there. Yeah, you won't. We'll, we'll hear. We'll, we'll be inside. That's Looking weekend. forward to it. Oh, yeah. Right. Follow, follow me on Facebook this week. We'll give away a few more passes to Hangtown. We'll see you next weekend, everybody. Have a great weekend. Be cool. See ya. Aloha. Talking money.